Seven four. The escape of Priya Thor of Priya Thor Priya. So one not four. So one we uh so four. So 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 four. No, I think no four. This the three under escape. And uh, this uh, description found in uh, district of the Muscle Province in the Pagoda. Now, Kiri Pagoda, Kiri Snipe Pagoda. I have just visited uh, this location uh, recently. Mention the name uh, so the book. And uh, in this inscription, we translated by Dr. Montera in December 2017. Praise the King Islam Rahman of the La Empire, dated to the year 633. The origin in the, the sixth century form of the man which combined the Sanskrit alphabet. And uh, the king, the great king of uh, Islam Brahman, of, of uh, China, the full of glory and bravery, is the king of the king who rule over Sumanipo and Tirisi, which is the border while the king in the neighboring state on the piece of the Arturia, the content of the inscription. Uh, and this inscription can see the Suran Pool in this line, Suran Pool. And translated by Mr. Montella, one of my former students. And Suran Pool is the, the city tablet. <coughs> And the case of the the district of the province. This location of the pagoda, the present location of the case of the pagoda. So, according to this description, it is the one that the first term of this condition. So according to this uh, inscription, the Muria uh, or the Khmer King uh, Khmer Empire is the real, the true location of Sun Boom the land of gold. And this is one of my business of the Buddhism and community in both areas. Uh, during that period, there was a transition from Hindu God King to Mahayana Bodhisattva King during the reign of Shaman the Seventh, in which national resources were directed to building of library, monastic dwelling, public work, and more earthly projects accessible to the common people. I think it is really the Renaissance in Cambodia we started two centuries before that of Europe. We started in Italy, then we did France in uh, the 14th century AD. So, the Renaissance is a cultural movement. Cultural movement uh, that focuses on the creative research, on human uh, issue, and on creative research. Humanistic research. So, uh, with, in, uh, under the reign of King Zaya Man the Seventh, Cambodia has started the Renaissance. And that's form, you see, the, what we believe and God in uh, Uncle Wat Temple, in Chu Bayan Temple, we focus on. Uh, human issue. That's why I think that the Renaissance has 
was drafted uh, two uh, centuries before that uh, in Europe. And during the glorious period of King Zion and the Seven, we had the great uh, popular police statue of a young star. They show that uh, that the sustainability and harmony um, in uh, Cambodia during uh, the reign of the Almighty Seven. And I think that uh, sustainability and harmony can still consume the position of my philosophy. And with this uh, Buddha statue, uh, we call a folk uh, Buddha statue in uh, Bayon style. And this uh, Buddha and the Naga is a symbol. Buddha and the Naga is a symbol of sustainability. During the uh, 15th century, during the 15th century from Sir, century BC, from the prison of Buddhism in uh, Cambodia, in the folklore kingdom, the 3rd century BC, up to the 12th century AD. So we still uh, practice Cambodia as they practice uh, Buddhism. So the Buddhist statue is a symbol of sustainability of uh, Buddhism in Cambodia for uh, to uh, uh, 15th century after the uh, birth of the first kingdom uh, in folklore and the 13th uh, century BC to 12th century AD. And uh, this Buddha statue also the symbol of harmony between political, Khmer political elite and Khmer intellectual elite. So, Buddha uh, and the Dagya, which is called the Poplo uh, Buddha of the Bajan style, the during the reign of Salman the Seventh, is a symbol of God, sustainability of Buddhism and the uh, harmony uh, between political elite and intellectual elite in Cambodia. This is the main reason for the glorious charm of Angkor Pelion. So, and I consider that the sustainability and harmony can show the two main elements of human theological foundation. And during that uh, period, we have the Buddha uh, statue uh, from the research of Jean Bosseguy, the French scholar, which uh, wrote uh, a book, an interesting book on uh, uh, the art, the history, art history, and Cambodia. And uh, you see the statue is adapted by the, the King of Taiwan the Seven. They did from my own time. Another last point is on the Buddhism heritage. You see, the 14th century, the, in the 14th century, the practice of Mahayana Buddhism in the Sanskrit canon was gradually declined, but then in favor of the old Theravada Buddhism and Bali canon. Officially, Theravada Buddhism began in Cambodia during the reign of Srindra Varma, the first Pali uh, Christian dating from uh, 1309. So, this is the official the practice of Theravada Buddhism uh, in Cambodia, thanks to the discovery of uh, this uh, first body description dating from the, the early uh, 20th century. 
and during the 14th century, you see, we have the, the growth, the secular growth of uh, Theravada Buddhism, and the Hindu temple was transformed into frontier. The symbol of the Buddha relics or Nirvana in the Theravada Buddhist property. So, you see the uh, transformation from the belief on the Hindu temple and Hinduism and uh, to Theravada Buddhism. Uh, and the Hindu temple uh, have been called Pratir. Pratir. And many Pagoda, many Pagoda, many ancient places no longer call the temple Hindu temple. They call Pratir. And uh, many, many Pratir throughout Cambodia, many Pratir. Yeah. But the uh, when in the that uh, ancient location we have uh, pagoda, we say water tier, water tier. We build on the ancient location of uh, Hindu temple. But if there is no uh, Buddhist monastery, we call pratir. Uh, not water tier, not water tier, but body tier, tier. So the distinction between water tier and uh, and uh, tier. When there is uh, the uh, Buddhist monastery built on the eastern location of Buddhist uh, of Hindu temple, we call water tier. We pagoda. When the, the this location. Uh, have been transformed into uh, uh, Pratia, there is no Pagoda. No Pagoda. Pratia, 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 uh, Balai, many, many Pratia in a Portland Yeah. <coughs> and uh, when this Buddhist Pagoda uh, was the uh, world bill on this uh, is an occasion. Uh, so then there are four priest names uh, Om, Tang, Tang, Rolyamba. Om, Tang, Tang, Rolyamba. The ancient name uh, I meant uh, indicated uh, that uh, this Hindu uh, Hindu uh, temple with Ong Tang Tang Rolyamba. Yeah. So the name uh, is in unchanged. But the Hindu temple has become Buddhist uh, monastery. So as uh, we have not much time, uh, it is uh, for my presentation. Thank you for my venerable uh, and uh, as me, as an ACDD gentleman. If you have any questions, please. Thank you so much. សូមគ្រប់ថ្លែងអំណរគុណដែលជាជាទីបំផុតចំពោះឯកដំប្រតិសភាជាសូត្រសំណាងដែលបានវាសំត្រាស់ការបំលឹកសម្រាប់កម្
Good morning to all. We are behind the schedule uh, quite a bit. The session is supposed to start 7.45, so we have to rush a bit, otherwise the, all the month has a good start. And uh, for the sake of the conference, which I think that's a good solution. Okay, we have this morning a very interesting panel on Buddhist heritage in India and Southeast Asia. I have here as a co-chair Professor Himalendra Kumar from BHU, uh, which we are trying to conduct uh, as smooth as possible. First of all, I would like to invite all the speakers, which I got in my hand about five of them. Please uh, get onto the stage. Professor M.K. Virasinghe from Sri Lanka, University of Colonia, Sri Lanka. Dr. Arvind Kumar Singh from Gautam Buddha University, India. Professor Shishmita Pandey from National Monumentary Authority. Sushmita Pandey. Dr. Thuy Chan, Chan Thuan, Royal Academy of Cambodia. Sorry if I pronounce names wrongly. And Professor Rajesh Ranjan from Navanananda Mahabihar. Take your place. I guess we got an hour only at the moment. It's 8.35, so hour, yes. So 9.45, we have to finish. So let's say that that's hour. So in this case, we have something around only 10 minutes. So you have to be very precise, to the point, very convincing, in a way that we can enlighten in a very short uh, passage. Uh, just like, the, you know, Venerable Asajita found when the Sariputta, you know, when the Sariputta was asking what was the, your teachings, and he just said that ye dhamma he ho and then more than enough. So you have to be very precise in that way. You're going to be about 10 minutes each. Uh, then, I will do is that when I will ask my culture to give a very common uh, reflections, not instead of uh, each uh, individual, so they are very common. I will uh, do my best to do a little bit, uh, so by then, we want, we will sacrifice our time for the uh, our next panel. So we will be very straightforward, sharp, sweet, and convincing, okay? Uh, let us start then with the first paper on collaboration between National Libraries of Sri Lanka and Cambodia for maximum utilization of heritage documents with special reference to palm leaf location. Very interesting indeed. Uh, by Professor M. K. Virasinghe of Department of Library and Information Science, University of Kalania, Sri Lanka. Please stay with you. Good morning, Lord. My topic is collaboration between National Libraries of Sri Lanka and Cambodia for maximum utilization of heritage documents with special reference to Bangladesh and Kalita. I am from Sri Lanka and from the Department of Library and Information Science. As you know, Sri Lanka is one of the Buddhist kingdom of the world. Majority of the Sri Lankans are Buddhist. There are so many Buddhist monuments as well as sacred uh, places in Sri Lanka, all over the Sri Lanka. Our uh, people used to go to these places to worship every day. Cambodia also is a Buddhist kingdom. Population is 60, 60.2 million. 95 percent follow Theravadi Buddhism. There are monasteries more than 4,000. Actually, my presentation based on the concept of the National Library is related to the historical bibliography. It is a new topic to this conference. 
National Library, as you know, there are various kind of libraries in every country, but only one national library has every country. If, I, if we take India, India National Library located in the Kal National Library of Sri Lanka located in Karam. National Library of the uh, Cambodia located in the capital. The largest national library we consider library of Congress. One of the major aim of the national library is conservation and preservation of indigenous knowledge as well as conservation and preservation heritage document. It is a one of the most important duty of every national library. Objective of the, my study, first time investigate about heritage document collection of both national libraries. Because I am going to present my presentation based on the collaboration two national libraries between Sri Lanka and Cambodia. Second objective is the study of physical condition of the palm leaf collection. Third one, study of the possible area of collaboration between two national libraries, explain the organization system of heritage documents in both national libraries. Last one is the suggest a new model for the collaboration between two national libraries. I am not going to explain about the definition about the national libraries because it will take time. However, I want to tell you national libraries is a cultural institution of Kyunka. We consider national libraries is our preservation of the culture. In world, there are two models of the national library. One model based on collaboration, concept of collaboration. Second model based on leadership for competition. Most national libraries in the developing world based on the concept of leadership and competition. But in the developed world, national library based on the concept of collaboration. This is the national library of Sri Lanka. We have a very great historical heritage. Our national library was set up established in 1990 after long dialogue and long history. This is the mission of the National Library. I am not going to explain one by one because it will take time. One of the most important mission of the National Library is the conservation and preservation of the, our heritage. You, we have a long tradition, writing tradition, since first century BC. This is the writing of Jupiter. First century BC. Our canonical Buddhist canonical text written down at one of the famous temples, Matre Anuga, first century BC. Since that incident, our writing tradition has developed. In early days, Western civilization as well as some other civilization used various materials for writing purpose, such as straight and flesh, parchment, papyrus. At that time, our nation used palm leaf for our writing tradition. As you know, Reverend Buddha Ghost also came to Sri Lanka, came to Ceylon and did down so many classical texts on palm leaf. This is the one of the picture from the Kalania temple. Our largest palm leaf collection based on the National Library, our monks, our reverend in Sri Lanka used to go National Library to use the collection of the palm leaf. Actually, we have a very great, very strong collection. We have, it is well organized collection. They have preserved, they have preserved. These are the collection of the National Library. Large number of the palm leaf preserved properly in our, our National Library. For the researchers of the, in the discipline of Buddhist studies, they can do their research based on the palm leaf collection of the National Library. These are some pictures of palm leaf collection of the National Library. You can see some, some Almira and Fabian. It has kept properly the palm leaf collection very organized. We have indexed all palm leaf. If we want any palm leaf, we can take according to the respect of the law of the Dr. Rangadhar. I think you know Dr. Rangadhar, part of life in science, he is from India, he is still the world considered the pioneer of the life in science as Dr. Itza Rangadhar. And we always respect to this law. His first law is 
library and books are for use. Therefore, we have opened our door in our national life before the Buddhist disappeared. We have produced specific oil for the black origin of palm leaf. First of all, we have to preserve, preserve the palm leaf collection. Therefore, we have produced the specific oil of, for the transformation and preservation of the palm leaf. This is the National Act of Cambodia. National Act of Cambodia established in 1924 under the French administration. You know, as you know, always like this are the challenge for dictators. Therefore, the Pol Pot totally destroyed the national right of the Cambodia. Now, the national right of Cambodia remained a very less amount of the palm leaf. I think more than 2,000 palm leaf collections were there. But problem is, it is decaying, deteriorating. Therefore, one of the responsibilities of us, we have to preserve them. Therefore, I am suggesting that bottle to conserve, conserve and preserve the palm leaf collection of national library of the Cambodia. This is the collection of the palm leaf national library of Cambodia. You can see it is not properly organized. It is scattering and decaying. But our heritage based on this collection. Therefore, it is one of the responsibilities. I am suggesting a collaborative program between National Life of Sri Lanka and the Cambodia because we have enough intellectual and manpower to help you to help the National Life of Cambodia. You can see the palm leaf collection of the National Life of Cambodia. This, this is very unorganized collection. We have to collect. We have to preserve them. After preservation and conservation, this palm leaf, you can do you can do your research on Buddhism and based on this collection. Therefore, I am suggesting we have to follow the concept of collaboration between two national libraries if that so we can produce a good model. We are ready as a national library people, as well as librarians of Sri Lanka to help you to preserve and conserve your palm leaf collection. This is the area I have suggested. Conservation of documents, exchange of expertise between two countries, organization of foreign documents, dissemination of content of boundaries, compilation of bibliographical tools. Therefore, I have suggested in my model there should be an agreement, there should be an MOU between national life of Cambodia and China. Thank you. So I just want to remind Professor Son Samnan and Sumnet Tamacharya and Professor Sohan Natana, there is a hand is you know, already extended to you. So that is your heart now. Go and done. Let it go. Grab him very tightly. Go to your library and so that uh, the work can be done. Before you. <laughs> Professor Son Samnan has done some cleaning and uh, no. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Let us move on to the second one, which will be more kind of a kind of a Buddhist heritage, the Sarana by Dr. Arvind Kumar Singh. Please, draw your hand in, please. Buddha. Sarnath enjoyed the high position in Buddhist world that 
and in one of the four states present lived by Buddha at the time of his death in Mahatayi Yavanapur. The seed of the Ganga was also born here with that conversion of Yasa and his 54 disciples. Sarnath is one of the four important places. It is equal to Bodhgaya and where the river, he and river is first traveled to the country of the Rukhsu. It is a place where the formation of new order of monks that is Sangha and order of religious doctrine in Dhamma was there. Sarnath is the place where the dark Dharma and this one particular incident is just due to the birth of Buddhism at this particular place at Karma. Because of this, at the place, Sangha was came into existence for the first time in 1910 of Pandal, the one of the schools given the Pandal It is also known or identified by the following names and the Sabadic places like Dharma Chakra, King Gira, Kishi Pakshan, Kemuyan, Migalao, Kishi Tarnath is also a sacred place for the Jain. Tarnath represents the site of the Rishi Sattana Mira. There is a different interpretation of Tarnath's name, right? Somewhere we find Rishi Sattana Mira, Rik Dai. And interpretation, I have to try to discuss this. Since nobody has challenged this interpretation as being now as a clear part, so we have also accepted this. And no explanation with the following is that yet probably deep with the age and origin of the modern name of Karma. During the 6th century, it was called Mirdao, and Pali Tisha plays the testimony to this fact. It has been known by the name during the time of Asoka and Tereska also. Also at the time of liberty of Paya and Sukhaya Then this place was devastated by the mountains. The temple of Sarangla was not in the extent and most probably built in the constituents of the same movement which led to the construction or establishment of holy place at Bodhagaya. The meaning of Sarnath is the Lord of the earth. And it seems that the Hindus have been worshipping the Buddha at Mahadev, Mahadev Sarangla. And Sarang Sarna, according to Lydia Kalinga, is the construction of Saranga, which is also disturbed by the Samuel V. Owing to the sanctity that's attached to it, the place continues to be a living center of Buddhist Buddhism since the last stage of the faith in northern India, and the such names as Dharam Chakra Vihar, the Dharam Chakra Vihar, the Dharam Chakra Pravartan Vihar. According to Pali Asta Kataj in the past, Kiti Tattan was known by the same name at the time of Pastor Buddha, Dhamma Dasi Buddha and Pastor Buddha, who were born there. But more often, Kiti Tattan was known by different names at the time of Christian Buddha, the right. The first time, it was known as Jemogya. It is probably thought out of Buddha to go to the air to Kiti Tattan to preach their first Dhamma. And that is why this place is also called Avishya Hitathani. That is an unchanging spot. Several other incidents related to Buddha's life and some Buddhist monks' life have been took place at this place and which has been discussed in Vinay Sita and Sita Kuru. The Buddhist Sangha was originated here as we know that the first sermon was delivered at this place. Conversion of Asa and his followers would be provided by the use of standards made of terrible the rules of forbidding the use of certain kinds of flesh, including the human flesh. Mara had visited this place twice, apart from the protection for it, to the other people who have been delivered at this place, like Pancha Sutta, Rakshya Sutta, Patetan Sutta, Pasta Sutta, Samaya Sutta, Saturiya Sutta, and a discourse from Maxia Panya of the Parayan Sutta, and the Thomas in Nassau. According to Pai Vitaja, it is evident that the sum of the Swami, Vipu, and Kano, Kanvartesa, Swami and Vipu had Kanvartesa and that is the purpose of time to time. Between Sari Sutta and Mahaportis, one between Mahaportis and Sista Hapsi Sari Sutta, and another discourse helps Kanna in his difficulty. 
According to Mahatma, there are also large community of monks that fifty percent in the second century BC, which is corroborated by the description found in the Mahavans that twelve thousand monks and their much number Sena for BC person went to Sri Lanka at the foundation ceremony of Mahatma in Aras Pura. So in some form, BC person fifteen hundred monks studying in India. Sipiyodan mentioned that Soka had intimidating to Usubu his desire to visit places connected with Buddha's activities and to elect Soka and his belief is confirmed by the Soka Lopetic case. Now I have tried to discuss the beginning of the history of Karma. P.A. Smith has mentioned that the history of Indian sculpture from Soka to the mountain conquest might also be illustrated with fair completeness from the finds of Dharma Kalun. The history of Dharma began from the Pali sculpture which are indicated by the means of monuments and inscriptions found here. Attest the rule of Asoka, the Sunna, Gupta and the King. In the Soka district, Dharma King to pertain in this year and erected several monuments to mark this pilgrimage of every Sambay Kishu from Dharmaraji Kishu Pasuka and Pillar for Monday to write a similar sign character which is now the greatest of India. Archaeological excavations have found a crowd to write about the sudden car bearing the described to the Sunga period and in the future of two of the same Kishu was written on the pillar of Pasuka. Then I am trying to discuss the activities that took place during the Sukhan period. Again, the enlargement of the Dhamme Kishku during the Gupta period and some activities related to art development during the Gupta period. And then also I am trying to discuss the status of Buddhism around the Dhamme period during the Dhamme Gupta boom. In the time and the time. And then the house came to decline around the 13th century, century and then again three discoveries which were in uh, I think 1394 by King of Seminar of Banana when he had excavated the Hamaki school. And after that, I have also tried to discuss about the various activities that took place by the Archaeological Survey of India under Cunningham, Ito, Horne, Hortel, Marshall, Hargreaves, and finally, Jair Ram Swami. And after this, the excavation took place at Dharma around the Dharma area, and some of the major Buddhist sites that came up are Chokhandi, Stupa, Tamek, Stupa, and also of their description, three description of their history. And then try to discuss about the Sarnath school of Buddhist art. Started from uh, uh, architects from Bath or Matura who had discussed the Bhumis, Pasutra, Statue and all that. And closer to the state. And then I have also discussed about the museum at the Sarnath and it is divided into several parts and every part is uh, excavated materials over there that have been on displayed in 1904. And now to conclude, Sarnath is one of the, the few representations of the architectural genius of the Indian people and represents the earliest and most imposing structures built in the and Greek from the late to the period. This is the story based on the work of historians, archaeologists and modern scholars. Sarnath archaeological sites hold an important position when it comes to the study of origin and its learning of Buddhism due to its culture and archaeological heritage, which are of high religious importance, particularly from this point of view. I guess generally when we go to Sarnath, we go as a place of holy, one of the holy places. We go around, we have a certain kind of a vibration we got it from that place where the Buddhism started, where the Buddhism was founded. And with the presentation of Dr. Arvin, he has shown that Sarnath is not only the where Buddhism was established and founded at first teaching, but there are so many other things which can learn from that. For example, the Buddhist art, the rich, uh, the right 
uh, sandstone of the motorized pile, and all other things uh, around uh, in the sauna. So if someone is very interested in the sauna, not as a one in a place where Buddha will give a first sermon, I guess that you have to read the article, otherwise, no, if you don't get the book, I guess that this book is not distributed for everyone, but you can uh, get in touch personally directly to the Dr. Harvey, because the whole idea of a sarangi and the burger diet one up here is very important indeed. It is not only the symbol of the origin of Buddhism, but again, if we look at the, uh, the history of uh, Buddhism in Sri Lanka, it is also there is a, a part played by the Eric Saranga, the Murga, uh, or the, the deer, which they endured uh, that they, they want to be over there. So, so there's a lot of other things we can learn from that. So thank you very much for such a collaboration you have presented. Uh, next, uh, Professor Susmita Pandit, please. Get celestial dwelling, 
and also the company of many eminent men. Now the second part of it is Rup Dhatu and it has two levels. First is the tangible uh, aspect, the second is the intangible aspect. The tangible aspect shows the life of Rup Dhatu and the narrative in that sense, Jataka, Jatakara, Shoji, Raja Shoji, Buddhaza and Bodhisattva. And just these all uh, present their great feet to the eye, they are beautiful sculptures. Then the second is progression of spiritual life known by different stages of meditation, which we read in the Buddhist text. And this was an important aspect of Rup uh, You can compare it, uh, uh, compare uh, these spiritual jhanas to the Akam Pratyatma Bhadi, and they are sim symbolically expressive. Now, Coming to the life of the Buddha, there are innumerable uh, panels depicting the life of the Buddha. There are some Buddha Mahala, Maya Maya Zim, who sees a white elephant coming to a womb. And the birth of the Dhar, uh, Maya gives the uh, birth standing, uh, like all the mothers of Bodhisattva do. And uh, as soon as he is born, he takes seven steps. Uh, the Dhar sees a sick man and gets disillusioned. Then, Mahabhinna is from a team where you can see the horse uh, Pantha along with the charioteer Chanda going back by after giving the Buddha uh, in, near the Anuma river. The horse is on the path of renunciation and Katha there. Then he is the Panchwadi Bhikkhu who soon leave him when they realize that he has left the path of great of death. This is the Jata offering. He offers him with rice pudding. Then the attack of Mars, he sends his daughter to the museum, but he is left unmoved. Then the enlightenment and final birth of an attack. Then there are various Jata stories, I don't think I have the time to uh, relate them. This is the Vishwanta Jata, the story of the uh, Prince Vishwanta who was, uh, who had given the great elephant in charity and he was punished, but everything he got back in the end. So I just took the Jatak story, Mahapati Jatak and Divi Jatak and also Ruru Jatak. Okay, then this is the Sodhan Kumar Adhan Katha. Uh, Sodhan Kumar was uh, greatly enamored and was infatuated in love with, the, with Manohara who was a fairy, the Kinnari. And the entire story told how he gets over his passion. Then this is Bandi Bhu, the story of Sodhan who goes in search of uh, uh, wisdom, then he goes to the uh, uh, Bodhisattva Madre who says that you have to uh, visit many Kanyan Mitras or Gurus. He goes to 53 of them. Some of them are kings, some of them are royal men, some of them are very ordinary men, some of them are women also. And again he goes to the goes to Bodhisattva Madre who sends him to Manjushri and also to Samantabhad. And finally he gets enlightened by Samantabhad, after meeting Samantabhad. Okay. Then, uh, it, it just gave rise, the uh, Gandhi gave rise to why and school and past time was the important protector. Uh, he has bridged the, uh, 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 the two philosophies, Yoga, Chahan and Vajamit. On the one hand, he says it is just Martata. On the other hand, lack of its inherent existence of all things. And then, saying that inherent existence, they don't have any concrete boundary. So that is why Buddhisattva can uh, penetrate any hard boundary also, that is what. And then he says the formal, can you see, formal is not by commenting on the Pratya Parvata Hidaya Sutra. He says that, O Tari Putra, form is not different from emptiness, and emptiness is not different from form. That is, you have to see uh, emptiness behind form and then you get digestion, the uh, Samak meditation and you get wisdom and when you see form behind emptiness, then you get abduction, departure and you get uh, Mahakarana and the balance of the two, I mean uh, Samak and Pachana is uh, the best thing and the phenomena is also very than you say. Now there are five Jhani Buddhas and four Jhani Buddhas are on four balustrades so from the like here you can see uh, they are directional symbolism. The north one is Amok City in Abhay Buddha, the eastern one is Akshogya in Bhumipat Buddha, the southern one is Ratu Pangha in Bharat uh, Buddha, the western one is Amtab in Jhani Buddha 
we were doing a very expert in digitalizing everything. And the uh, government of Indonesia employed him to do big project with uh, millions of dollars. And then he did so well that he turned everything to Bora Bora to the digitalize that you can zoom in everything, the text is there, you can move the, all the arm, the leaf, you can move it, make it, make it animated, everything. So it was too good, and then eventually in a kind of a one chip called 70 gigabyte, actually, it is available. But uh, I guess that once the project was done, government of India, government of Indonesia thought that it is, you know, that, uh, Islam is promoting Buddhism in a different way. So they stop it. After the project is done, so there is no release of that. So sorry for that. Actually, the work is very, very fantastic that you can uh, study Buddhism from the world. Thank you very much for the uh, very excellent uh, presentation by Professor Susmita. Well, we are going a little bit further now from Indonesia, going back to Brahmaputra River by uh, Dr. Toy Chan Tong.
men and zero getting interrupted because of the war, you know, the, the three kingdom fight to uh, long history of the three kingdom uh, in, in China. They get up a network through, through Malachi zero because of the compost they starting to uh, use. Uh, this Malachi zero is hit to uh, Mr. Champa. Where is it, Mr. Champa? Champa is a country that uh, first uh, we found evidence of the Brahminism. Or the Dinka believes, you see, this this, this the map of the 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 Mister. Okay. Uh, this uh, map of the Mister. All this temple is a uh, uh, Hindu <coughs> Hindu temple. They believe. They believe in the uh, uh, this Hindu temple, all made from base is uh, believed in the uh, 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 mostly the the Iso, Iswa, Iso. This culture, the Champa culture, strict, you see, almost similar to. Mostly Southeast Asia have same street. Some police say some street, some they say Alaba, some they say okay. We have to try to find the real source of the original street. This one, okay. This in the Mason in the in the Mason Museum. So clearly. Champa transfer the 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 culture from Hinduism to Buddhism. Start from 10th century between today, 9th century, 10th century to 14th century. Champa start to believe a uh, uh, Buddhism. What is called the Sai, don't give Sai, don't give Sai. It's really huge uh, uh, of Buddhist Sai made from the brick. But actually, today only this gate remains. All the all the all the monuments are blue trees and destroyed. Uh, yeah, as you know, the new uh, nation that take over the Champa. Okay, back to the south. Back to the south, we can see a state called Bunon. Previous, previous picture from the Tamilian son Sunan, they already mentioned, and some uh, picture already mentioned. What is it? Punon. Punon is really territories that connect from the south, from Java, further to the south, and south to the west. To the west, probably most of you, many of you visit already Kedas, Kedas, upper land of uh, mainland of Malaysia. There's also the trace of the temple from the Punon period. The Punon has uh, have their own seaport, what they call Ogao. Ogao. Ogao is really, really a canal connected to the to the uh, to the sea, about mostly 70 kilometers. The street also the same like Jaffa Street. The, uh, this this one. So this place I just saw the picture. Okay, there's coin, there's canal, but it's very usually bridge was introduced to Southeast Asia around uh, first century BC BCE and but. Here around four centuries, uh, see first Bazantine temple in in Okobari of Kuala <coughs> was constructed. So the cave, the cave is already uh, uh, known that the cave was dedicated or stored the the Liga. So the Kunon believe uh, a religion mostly Hindu in Siva. 
not put uh, not put it yet. So probably today, tomorrow, uh, the weekend, go visit the museum. You see the pottery, uh, huge uh, giant structure here, and a lot of uh, 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 linga uh, to show the uh, early civilization of of Punak that uh, believed in uh, Hindu Jesus. Up till 13th century, Cambodia started to believe the uh, uh, Buddhist, Buddhism because of the old monuments, no, mostly the historical monuments made by brick, brick, sandstone, and net rice, eight by percent decayed to Hinduism, except by John. Most probably, uh, 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 body. Okay, I move forward to Myanmar. Uh, what I found, sorry, this one. Ah, so this Guru Guru, you 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 mean already the uh, Java. The Java JavaScript was a small time. Of course, you have seen already the, the ship uh, was uh, written by the previous speaker as well. The Guru Guru, uh, the, 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 the Buddhist kiss, the Bagan. Okay, what is it, the Bagan? Bagan is the uh, more than thousand of temple was here uh, by break. To me, Bagan it seems like not maritime several. Probably Bagan connect to Indian civilization through mainland. Because when you travel into Manipur, Assam, this Manipur Assam may connect straight uh, because of the Iravadi River, this connects straight to Bagan. This Bagan is a uh, but Bagan only in the 10th century AD, 9th, 10th, 11th century AD uh, temple. All these temples uh, built for the Buddhist dedication. So, my conclusion, Southeast Asia is the country
there's a limitation in time. We always want more and more greedy, and uh, resources are very limited. And the time is one of the very, very costly resource for us at this moment. Well, Professor Ayrady showed us how Champa, uh, the Vietnam, and other places in the Southeast Asia is kind of a very overlooked kind of a glance of the Buddhism in the Southeast Asia in a way. So let us go to the next one with the our last presenter for this session is on very interesting how Buddha's teaching can uh, really uh, resolve the conflict uh, which is uh, everywhere in this world, every country we are facing. So please, Professor Rajesh Ranjan, for 10 minutes, please. Most Venerable Mahasan, respected chair and co chair, my fellow delegates, ladies and gentlemen. At the outset, let me express my gratefulness to the organizer who has given me this opportunity to speak few words on this presentation. You should have views on conflict results. The topic of my paper is to have views on conflict resolution as reflected in the Tam Gam Sutta of the Machine. The miraculous achievements made by humans in the field of science and technology in order to make the life comfortable has not proved to be of much help. Instead, the suffering and sorrow of human beings has increased. Violence and aggression manifested through wars and conflict, hatred and mistrust has increased at an alarming rate. Throughout the world, most, most people cannot live or move peacefully without fear and insecurity and so, so and for such situations, the human beings are responsible. Most of the injuries in the world are created by them. Now I have given the yes, modern problem, uh, equivalent problems of this country. I am reading this section. Now, the period of Lord Buddha, Sakya Poli, has issued over the distribution of water of River Roini is one of the evidences today. Though the Buddha did not propound any specific theory with regards to the country's resolution, Hence, the various texts of Pali Sripikata reveal that whenever occasion arose, the Buddha fits the various means, methods of resolving the various types of conflicts, be they among the members of the Sangha or in between the kings or the clans or in between the individuals. We find some of the sermons of the Lord Buddha specifically mention and the ways and means to resolve various types of conflicts. Mention may be made of Aran, Aran Vibhanga the Kosambiya Sutta, the Kirti Sutta and Sam Gam Sutta of the Majimnika, Kalabibhah Sutta of the Sanjutanika, etc. Out of the above mentioned Sutta, the Sam Gam Sutta of the Majimnika has been uh, delineated in, the, in order to explain the methods, ways of conflict resolution as what is by the Lord Buddha to his disciples and their relevance in contemporary world. As Bhikkhu, Yan, Moli and Bhikkhu both inputs in, in the Sutta takes into account a conflict that arose among the followers of Jainism after the death of Mahavira and prepares the Buddhist monastic community not to fall into a similar situation after the death of the Buddha. As the Sutta has it, with the death of Lord Buddha, a conflict arose among the Jain monastic disciples who have doctrine and discipline. Divided and split into two, the disciples and, uh, had taken to quarreling and drowning and were deep in dispute, stabbing each other with other daggers. Seeing this battle, the, the white, white clothes, uh, clothes, the disciples became disgusted, dismayed, and dis disappointed. The news was eventually brought to the Buddha by his disciple Ananda to obtain his vision in order to check similar occurrences in the Buddhist religion with the demise of the Master. Being informed, the Buddha inquired from Ananda whether there existed any conflict among his disciples. With, with, uh, with reference to the fundamental Buddhist teachings, what, what do you think, Anand, these things uh, that I have taught you after, uh, after directly knowing them, that is the four foundations of mindfulness, the four right kinds of striving, the four bases of spiritual power, the five faculties, the five powers, the seven enlightenment factors, the noble eightfold path. Do you see even two monks who make different uh, assertions about these things? And assured him that there was there were no, none with regard to the fundamental teaching. But the, but he continued that some monks who lived with a with a seeming difference towards the Buddha might after the Parinibbana create conflict in the community about livelihood and about the disciplinary rules. 
the Buddha's uh, reply was a dispute. Uh, reply was a dispute about livelihood and about the discipline. Uh, disciplinary rules should be strictly, but should a dispute arise in the monastic community about the path and the way? Of that particular, such a such a dispute would be for the harm and happiness of many, for loss of for the loss, harm and suffering of gods and humans. The Buddha then expounds the rules of conflict and the methods of resolving them. The Samkam Sutta highlights six psychological rules of conflict as follows: One who is angry and resentful lies with a root of conflict. Number two, one who is contemptuous and insolvent lies with a root of dispute. Number three, one who is envious and avarious lies with a root of dispute. Fourth one is one who is deceitful, deceitful and fraudulent lies with a root of dispute. Fifth one is one who is with evil wishes and wrong deeds with uh, lives with a root of dispute. And last one is one who adheres to one's own view, holds on to them tenaciously and relinquishes them with difficulty. A difficulty lives with a root of dispute. Uh, now this is uh, further the Sam Kham Sutta records the following four conflict types type and best uh, best resolved by the range of formal process that is adhikar. That I am reading this section. The main the, the sutta written the, the, the sutta presents several formal conflict resolution methods. That is adhikar sama samatha. Number one is samukha vinayam. That is conflict resolution by confrontation. Then that is uh, second one is sati vinayam. Conflict resolution on account of memory. Uh, then Amul Vinayo, third one. Conflict resolution on account of past insanity. The fourth one is Pati Nyas Karana. That is conflict resolution by the effecting of acknowledgement of an offense. Then fifth one is Ebu Yitsika. That is conflict resolution by opinion of the majority. Sixth one is Papa Yitsika. Conflict resolution by pronouncement of bad character against someone. And last seventh one is Tin Vitharaka. That is conflict resolution by covering uh, over with grass. Now, all these, these seven methods of uh, resolving the conflict have been detailed, uh, given in detail. I am giving this and I am coming to this last, last portion of this paper. In conclusion, the Sutta presents six principles of cordiality. As it is said, each helps in creating love and respect and con conduces to cohesion, to non dispute, to concord, and to unity. Number one is one maintains godly acts of loving kindness both in public and in pri uh, private towards his companions in the holy life. Second one is one maintains verbal acts of loving kindness, kindness both in public and in private towards by his companions in the holy life. Third one is one maintains mental acts of loving kindness both in public and in private towards his companion in the holy life. Fourth one is one enjoys things in common with his, with, with his virtuous companion in the holy life without making reservations. He shares with them any righteous gain that has been obtained in a righteous way, including even the mere content of his arms power. Fifth one, one dwells both in public and in private, possessing in common with his companions in the holy life those virtues that are unbroken, untaught, unblemished, unmortal, being, being praised by the wise, ungrasped, leading to concentration. Last one is one who one dwells in both in public and in private, possessing in common with his companions in the holy life that view that is noble and emancipating and leads. The one who practices in accordance with it to the complete destruction of suffering. Those who undertake the, and maintain these six principles of cordiality, the Sutta Kanpal could endure any course of his peace, trivial or gross, which in turn leads to their welfare and happiness for a long time. In such an ideal Buddhist monastic community, we could assume conflicts did not occur and conflicts with resolution methods will not be required. But in the Sam Gamsut, anticipating conflicts to take place in the monastic community, in his absence, the Buddha presented the seven methods of conflict resolution. We think we have universal acceptability of conflict resolution. Thank you very much, Professor Ranjan. Generally, every fortnight, on the full moon day and uh, the, the dark moon day, the Buddhist monasteries, we recite the Pati Moksha. And 
we are reminded of this Adhikarana Samatha every time. So this is not the fourth night yet. I'm again hearing this again uh, between the week. So thank you uh, for reminding us the very important uh, technique of resolving the conflict which is appeared in the Tripitaka and also in the Vinaya Chapter 227 Rules of the Buddhist Monks, which could be applied by any laity, any people who are really willing to solve that conflict. Uh, thank you very much once again. Uh, as we now got something only about five minutes, um, we have been doing the work of a Bodhisattva by donating our time for the next panel. Uh, I guess that we'll get married of this, the part of this. But anyway, uh, before, I don't know whether it's enough for question and answer, but I would like to ask my co-chair to give a kind of overall reflections of these five papers, please. Thank you, Chairman, for the right to some of these all the five papers, please, in the very present moment. You are having only five minutes left. First of all, uh, uh, Professor M. K. Gurasing in his paper collaboration between the National Library of the Lanka and the Library of Doji, Cambodia. As we know that uh, India is uh, the land of the birth of the and it is called also a land of the Vatican. But to see, Sri Lankans are real upholders of the Vatican. When at the time of the king, but the Gaumani of that, in the first century BC, when the Tripitaka and Kometri were written first time, in India, the first being a part of land of the Hindi Kantateva Tikka, we are not having any intense documents, literary documents, related with the teachings of the Buddha. So in that case, Sri Lankans are bigger of the holders of the Yerva Tikka. They are preserving the teachings of the Buddha in the literary documents or in the preserving the teachings of the Buddha in single language. And it, uh, at the time of the first century, Acharya was to go to waste and they translated, he translated all the commentary available in the single uh, language to Mahathiri language. So there is a, a tradition of how this air path to become driven from Sri Lanka to India. In the same manner, our uh, Cambodia had also national importance in the sense that it had also preserved the important things to the in the written documents. Recently, I came to know that uh, there was a text, Sankiti Vansu, which was composed in Thailand in 1789, when King Ram Muthi died in commemoration of that king. This Sankiti Vansu was composed. And uh, this text was not available in Thailand. Recently, when the government of the Thailand was planning to publish this text, the text was not available in Thailand. But in Cambodia, the National Library of Cambodia, this text was developed. And this text was borrowed from the government of Cambodia to Thailand. And then this text was published with the translation in Thai language. So in that way, how the Cambodia and the Sri Lankan they are the real upholders of the Deva Buddhism in preserving the teachings of the Buddha in the written documents or in the park lips preservation. So thank you very much for this your paper. Second, the paper was presented by our Dr. Arvind Kumar Singh on the topic Sarna, the cradle of the Buddhist heritage. The Sarna has its importance that whenever you visit any Aram, Bihar or Mahavya, you are having the one insignia that there is a Dhamma Chakra which is being planned by the two years. Whenever you visit any, you can say, monastery, you will find that there is a Dhamma Chakra which is being planned by the two years, which symbolizes the first servant of the Buddha. That is the teachings of the Buddha were priest at the Sarnath. These two years are signifying the Ishipatana, that is the dear part, and where the Dhamma Chakra is signifying the Dhamma Chakra Parvartana. 
So this is the great importance. And Professor Anil Kumar is here. He told that this is a to Dhamma Bhava, which is the essence of the intensive teachings of the Buddhist. You will also find it in all the Mahavirata or in all the monasteries. This is the Dhamma Jetu Bhava. In the case of the Yerodha, Yerodha, the Kargatwa. So you will find it. So that has the importance of Sarnath. In itself, that how this cultural heritage has been preserved in all the monasteries by symbolizing the first circle of Prabhupada in the insignia of the Dharma Shakti being flanked by the deers. Again, in the third paper, uh, Professor Susita Pante, what the heritage monuments of God Buddha, she has presented a very, you can say, uh, historical or manner. And we know that art is an expression of the, you can say, idea and thought. There are two art aspects, Pratima and Lakshan, which you might be knowing very well. Pratima is a sensual object of the presentation of the form. And Lakshan is the idea which an artist tries to expose on the, you can say, by making the symbols or you can say any statue. This Pratima and Lakshan, we are also having in Abhidharma text also, there are two terms, Chintasanya and Chintkiriya. Chintasanya is the perception of the consciousness by which an artist organizes the object in his own mind and by the Chintkiriya, an artist tries to make the painting or make the statue in that manner. So these two things have been, or you can say, nicely presented by Professor Sita Pandey in her own paper. What the difference I would like to have from her for my own purpose? When she was presenting about the Rupa Dhatu, she had discussed to Burnley the five you can say objects that is Vita, Vichar, Vedana, Smriti and Ikkadrita. But uh, as we are having the textual reference in the Dekinika as well as in the Vedamat Sangho, there are five stages group that is the Vita, Vichar, Vedi, Sukha and Ikkadrita. These are the five dhana, but in the Sukha we are having only four dhana. But uh, here you have presented in your uh, paper that uh, how this effect of which are Vedana, Smriti and Ekagata. From where this is, you have taken, she is the source of information. Uh, I will uh, discuss with you later on, that from where, what is the source of that thing, you can say, Rupa Dhatu, the five stages. So this is a nice uh, presentation, so they get this, the Kaam Dhatu, Rupa Dhatu, and Rupa Dhatu. She has presented in a very, you can say, artistic manner. In the fourth paper, Professor Fluid Chantaral, in his paper, the kingdom between the Brahmaputra river and the Red river. So, this is the, you can say, description of the early civilization of the two countries, that is the Brahmaputra as well as, you can say, the Cambodia. How this uh, phenomenon uh, civilization uh, uh, arose, and if we are having the reference that uh, first of all, Sanskrit Buddhism or Mahayan Buddhism was established in our uh, Cambodia, and how this uh, uh, later on this Mahayan Buddhism where uh, you can say suppressed and the Theravada Buddhism came into existence. So this Punan civilization and the uh, Yukas Brahmaputra civilization, he has compared in a very nice manner. And uh, he had also discussed about the uh, script, that uh, how the scripts of the uh, two civilizations are <coughs> working with each other. In the last uh, presentation, Mr. Rajesh Ranjan, in his paper on the Buddha's views on the conflict as reflected in the Sam Dham Sukhya. So 
So in this paper, uh, Professor Rajesh Ranjan has discussed about that, so what are the causes of the conflict. And he has discussed about some of the sutta, the, like Krav Vibhag Sutta of the Sutta Vibhag. There is another sutta in the Sutta Vibhag Sutta, that is Sattopaya Sutta. And Sattopaya Sutta Vibhag says that there are only two things which are responsible for making conflict in the society. They are called as Issa and Machari. My definition is uh, as well as jealousy. Issa is Yatsaya and Machariya is Matsariya. That is the majorities. These are the two causes which is cause conflict in the society. So he has discussed all the, uh, you can say for the monks, there are seven Adhikarna Samatta, how these can be followed by the uh, people in the uh, Manasakya and myself, I can replace all the paper presenters. They have completed in a very, you can say, limited in time. Thank you all. Mr. Sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Which has been summarized more or less and then shortcoming of the presentation. Of course, as I understand that you have those answers in the full paper. And then because of our constraint of time, we can't really go through a lot of things. Actually, I have my own say but I'm going to reserve that as well because I'm looking at the time, it is 9.50, so which has already we have taken five minutes from the from the, the coming panel. So sorry, uh, Professor Chen Tong and all scholars. I guess that uh, you can talk to each other and then we can, because otherwise you'll be on just for the next sessions. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, just interrupt one word with one, one minute. To, you know, it's a very quite interesting international uh, conference here, but you know, we are scholar from Southeast Asia, S should at least have 15 minutes or 20 minutes per, per, per speaker, then you can pass out more information. Therefore, example, I'm speaking only five minutes, ten minutes, and then the, the, the audience, they could not catch up what I want to say, you know, from Brahmanan to the Red River. It's, there's a lot, and she's talking a lot about Guru Guru. Therefore, I urge next time, sometimes, sometimes, I'm a venerable Kisa Vandara, please organize, give more time to the speaker. Thank you. Uh, thank you. So I don't have to say anything. <laughs> uh, okay. So thank you for excellent presentations, and then I hope that you enjoy. And if there's any questions, please go and direct the ask. I am sorry that I can't give any time for the any questions for the questions. Thank you very much. So, for time, I'm not going to get into the of what to go, but I keep going to the so far, so far, and 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 so far, ពីទីរូបនៅក្នុងកម្មវិធីបន្តែហើយជាបន្តសូមបរិទ្ធនាយនិពន្ធព្រះធម៌ខុសាច្ចាប្រទេសទីសម្រាប់ប្រតិណា